Hi, and welcome to Matt Holman Talks Mental Health, the podcast where I have the opportunity to sit down and chat with amazing humans about their journeys with mental health. For this episode, I'm so happy to introduce Joanna Hunt to the conversation. Welcome, Joanna. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here, Matt. Oh, lovely to see you. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Um, as always, just a brief introduction. I'll let people know how we got connected and why we were on this episode together. Um, I'll let you a proper introduction to yourself shortly. Tell people who you are, what you do and why you do it. We'll get into that in, in a moment. But um, recently I participated in a conference called This Can Happen and Joanna was one of the uh, delegates who was watching the event unfold and everything that was going on there. I was very lucky to host a panel talking about parenting and mental ill health and not giving anything away, but parenting is a big part of this conversation today. I'm sure. Um, so Joanna reached out to me afterwards and was great to just sort of engage in a conversation. Opportunity to talk about a podcast. I'm never going to miss those, am I? So um, here we are. We we're talking about a podcast. But Joanna also very kindly sent me a copy of her book called Find Your Mama Groove. Um, for anybody that's listening, uh, you won't be seeing that I'm actually holding up a copy of the book, but go on the YouTube channel and you'll be able to see that. We'll put links in as well. But it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for that. It's very kind of you to send that to me as well. And yeah, I'll pass it over to you, Joanna. Welcome. Thank you so much. And yes, I was absolutely blown away by your um, your panel discussion on This Can Happen. Everything that the conversation stands for um, when there is challenging challenges coming up at home, it's really hard to, to focus and to create our best uh, work uh, within our career. So it's, it's so important to be able to just uh, have that conversation and to start sharing different supports that can be can be put into place for, for parents or more namely for mothers in, in my case, um, to really be able to take their life to the next level in a way where they're feeling very connected to themselves and their family. Um, and that gives them the power to pursue their unique path in their career. Amazing. So um, we'll get into sort of all of that as we go into the conversation, no doubt. Um, but the big question I always ask, and you define what it looks like from your perspective, I want you to take me on a journey. And it's quite appropriate, I think, because you're not living in the country that you were born in and you're in a different island to the one that you went to. And I'll let you share what that means. But tell me a journey of your experiences with mental health, please, Joanna. OK, well, let's see here. So um, at the age of 14, I had transferred schools and I was introduced to my very first um, guidance counselor, my guidance counselor. And I was just really blown away by this man and his connection to me. At the time, I was just so painfully shy, um, riddled with anxiety, like just, yeah, kind of a bit of a wallflower and then brand new to the school where I knew no one. And I had gone to to the school over the summer to create my, my schedule and um, this with this guidance counselor. So fast forward a month later, I start my first day of school and this uh, counselor, he had just remembered who I was. He remembered my name um, and I couldn't even believe it. And he would just right. chant my name, he'd chant, yeah, chant my name in the hallway. And he was like, you know, what are you doing? How are you gonna get involved? He really, he really saw me and he pushed me out of my comfort zone. And um, it was at this point in my life, I was just like, wow. I don't know why, but this man thinks that I am extraordinary. And um, it was one of the most powerful gifts I feel anyone has ever given me because it allowed me to feel, um, yeah, to feel that special spark within me, but also it really, I had a desire to then create that a ripple effect in the world. And I wanted every child in the world to feel how extraordinary they were. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Fast forward, I also at this time made the decision, okay, I'm gonna be a guidance counselor one day. I'm gonna work with children and families in this way. Yep. So um, throughout high school, I was definitely, you know, miss perfectionistic. I studied really hard to get all those A's and um, lots of anxiety. I had developed an, an eating disorder around the age of 17 and um, that continued with me for many, many years and I, was always striving to be the best, be the top, you know, to be the captain, the class president. Um, I really, yeah, I, I went for it. I went for life. And that is part of who I am, but it's, it's a different, it's in a different way now because I feel for a long time I was striving from a place of, of self-hate and not feeling good enough, where now it's striving from a place of true compassion. And I want to, um, I want to share my magic with the world. So when I was 19 years old, I started yoga. I was really called to go to a, to a first class and um, the first class I absolutely hated, but the second class I did go back and this magical thing happened to me in this yoga class where my mind just 
stopped. And I felt peace for the first time in my life that I didn't even know was possible. It was in this moment that I actually realized how intense my anxiety was and actually how intense my attentional issues also were. Um, and I thought, wow, I, I want to feel this more. And also I need to look into what is going on for me because I just, I didn't, the anxiety and the attentional issues and um, the developing like struggles with bulimia and unable to feel my emotions. I didn't even know that these were issues. I felt like I was kind of all caught up in, in the cycle of, um, of, of what I thought my life was. And so when my mind finally calmed down, um, I realized that I need to do more of this. I need to do more of this. So I was drawn to go on my own little journey where I was doing lots of different things with meditations and mindfulness and, um, and lots and lots of yoga. And then I did go on and become a school guidance counselor. So I worked with, with children and I absolutely loved it. I would I loved it. I loved kids and I would make such a big impact. I feel like I would really develop these very special bonds with the kids and they would make some changes for a little bit, but really very quickly within this work of working with children, I realize that it's a family systems issue and that the most profound effects when working with kids is actually working with the whole family and and especially with, with the mom, because very often when there was, um, if there was a concern at home, I, I did meet with children, but I let, I met with a lot of moms, a lot of moms ended up in, in my chair. Um, and at this time in the counseling piece, I still struggled with my anxiety. I still struggled with my perfectionism. I was still struggling with my bulimia and, um, I felt real like a, a big discontent. I just felt like I needed to just absolutely pause. I felt like I can't continue in integrity to keep doing this work if I don't sort myself out. And so um, at this point, I decided to enroll in a yoga teaching course. And I didn't want to become a yoga teacher. I actually was doing this. This is the first time I ever invested in myself. Um, and I actually said to the teacher on the first day, I said, um, no matter what, do not let me become a yoga teacher because uh, everything I touch yeah. turns to work. And this has been my saving oh. grace. And I really just, I don't want to, to merge the two. So it was a seven month course and month six, there's like fireworks went off. My whole life changed over this period of time. Um, I really came into myself and I found this personal power within me and this inner strength. And um, I began to love myself. And so I was like, wow, this is so good. I need to learn more. I wanna do more. Um, and so I then actually, I, I left my career at that time and I moved to New York City to continue to deepen my, my knowledge of yoga therapeutics. And again, um, because I felt like, okay, this is gonna be something I'm gonna do one day, but for my own healing journey. And then yoga therapeutics is a fascinating practice where each organ system is linked to emotions within the body. And so as you begin to, you know, the mind-body connection. So it was actually through certain breathing practices, through certain stretches, through certain lifestyle and consciousness tools, you can expand um, the meridian pathways that line around the organs and you can feel really good. So I was learning how to basically bring myself from imbalance to balance very holistically. And then this is the gift that I wanted to share with, um, with mothers and with families. And just because it was like, wow, this is incredible. So how do they connect to themselves? Because only from that place of when we can truly connect to ourselves, can we connect with our children, with our partners, with the world. Um, so I pursued this healing journey and it brought me to Bali and I, yeah, I've kind of dove deep over the past few years in lots of alternative forms of, um, of therapies and, and embodiment tools and being able to work with um, shamans and priestesses and energy healers and body workers and sound healers and self-love coaches. And, um, and from all of this work, I have been able to thrive. And so I created a methodology based off of my own healing journey that's outlined in my book, Find Your Mama Groove. That is a journey of embodiment. It's being able to work through those emotions with integrity and to take 
personal power and personal responsibility for your life. And so I bring moms through the five elements um, that's filled with lots of different tools and um, practices that they can use. So they bring themselves into balance so that they can create a connected life, home, and then career. Because once we're in a place of balance and once our home and our family is feeling really, is feeling really strong, um, it's so much easier to really be able to pursue your unique path and do what you love. And um, I now can do this from a place of yeah integrity because I know that this that these practices work. And um, I just want to share it with as many moms as possible and continue through that to allow not only moms to feel extraordinary, but to really allow their children to feel extraordinary as well. Yeah, so 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 relevant and so important as well. It really is. And it's a and it is a hard world for children at the moment. And you know, with whether it's been learning schooling through lockdowns and COVID or where they are at the moment in their sort of their transitions through to this sort of where we are at the moment. So it's incredible. I really, I really find it fascinating what you're doing. Um I, so let me delve a bit deeper into some of that, if that's OK. So so you're not in Bali now. Right. First thing no. is, is a shame. Yeah. You're not in Bali now, but you're on another island, aren't you? So that was I am. interesting. Yes. So yeah. How- here in the UK on the Isle of Wight um, yeah. with my husband, who is British and yeah. um, our beautiful baby girl, who is two and a half years old, Tula. Right. And um, here's a fun fact for you that the Isle of Wight is actually a very similar shape to that of Bali. And um, it just absolutely blew my mind when I, I walked into uh, our Bali villa just actually this past winter and I saw a map on the wall and I said, I didn't know we had a map of the Isle of Wight here. And it was, no, it was actually, yeah, it was Bali. So there must be some, some reason, some synergy between the two places. Yeah, it must be absolutely it's drawn to those shapes, definitely. So yeah, ama- amazing. Well, you know, incredible. You, you, you've you've obviously travelled well, and you've been been in different places, different locations. So so you mentioned there your daughter, and and you know having a child, and and was that the catalyst for writing this then to have that? You know, because I want to understand where you come to in your thoughts of, I need to write a book about this, or I need to put this out there somehow. So what happened? What was the sort of the process for you, or was it just easy and you just went, I've got it all. Here it is. Well, actually, so I signed my book deal um, when my daughter was three months old. Okay. And um, so the thing is, I had actually been working with with families and with moms for my entire career up to that. And I actually had developed this methodology before I became a mom. And so I wanted to use my maternity leaves kind of like birthing, you know, my daughter into the world, but also birthing my work. Um, And so I did it, yes, simultaneously. And actually it was so amazing because the power of the mind, the power of manifestation, I said, okay, I just want to finish this book before she can start walking um, because then it's going to be all over. And the day I finished the book, she took her first step, which was just incredible it was just incredible but you know I have to say that my becoming a mom has shifted my coaching greatly and um, it's definitely allowed me to have more compassion and understanding for really what it means to to be a mother um, especially to be a mother who who has strong passions and has a strong desire to want to really build a career for herself like I do and um, that really actually in the past year I have dove deep into my own methodology because I was struggling myself. Um, After finishing the book, I just was feeling a bit uh, burnt out. I felt like I had given up all of my energy. Um, And so we actually then went back, my husband and I and my daughter, we went back to to Bali in November of last year where I was able to, um, yeah, to really just once again, to go deep into my healing journey. And we did do a lot of content creation. I turned the book into an online course out there, but it was, it was also a, a time for me to recharge and, and to heal and to come back to my center. Wow. Um, that's, it. that's incredible as well. You know, it, it's, it's wonderful to get to understand a little bit about what happened and how it happened and the journey and the transition between those points. And I love that thought that, you know, you finished it the day that your daughter took her first steps and, you know, that creates its own set of challenges then, doesn't it? You know, everything's at risk or there's a following them around all, all over. But I, I think that's amazing. Um, and your energy level's changing, you know, so that's an important one. You recognize that and then you adjust it, right? Did, yes you totally you, you had that self-reflective element that said okay I'm struggling a bit here or how, how did that come about 
Well, definitely having a daughter who was so young and was really struggling with sleep and also okay. just through breastfeeding, mm -hmm. I was exhausted. I was exhausted. And so actually one of the first things that I did when I went out to Bali is I worked with a holistic doctor. We ran like tons of blood, blood tests because okay. I feel like my energy levels have always been really, really high in life. And mm -hmm. so much of it has to do with, with my mindset and and it's just being able to actually understand that for, for moms who are in that place of sleep deprivation, like how much that actually takes yeah. a toll on, on the body. And that, you know, it's not about just pushing through, pushing through, doing the next thing. Um, I mean, I felt like with, with the book, I did have a, a deadline and a contract and I had a message <laughs> that I wanted to share with the world. So I was like, okay, oh we're going to yeah. do it. We're going to do this. Yeah. Um, but it really then required me to just slow mm. down and to take care of myself. Yeah, so true though, isn't it? Yeah, it's important. And and now then, so let's so let's go to now because obviously that was November last year. We're now, gosh, another year beyond that, right? So so how how's this last year been for you? What's sort of the highlights or the low points? What how have you defined that? How's that been? This has been the best year of my life. Has it? I love yes. that. That's so cool. I like I just, as I say this, my heart's like bing, binging with joy. I feel amazing. Yeah, I feel so good. Um, I feel happy and I feel healthy. I feel really aligned with my work. I absolutely love being a mom. Um, yeah. I love my daughter. I love everything that she's teaching me. And, you know, I just want to think I'm like, there's no way that this can get any better. It's like the next day happens and she does something different. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it gets better. Um, but, right. you know, through this past year, actually taking myself again, taking some time out and really bringing myself on my own journey um, and my own methodology that's outlined in the book, I came back to life in such a major way. And um, me coming back to life has allowed like my partnership with my husband to just to really flourish. I feel like we're actually more in love now than we were um, even at the beginning of, of our marriage. We, we got married really fast, um, actually. Okay. Wow. So, but yeah, we're, we're really strong and um Yes, so everything with with him and with us as a family and my work, and I have been sharing this work with with more and more um, working moms and yeah. like being able to bring them through my methodology and also just like watching their lives transform and watching them thrive and really it's it's illuminated my life and it's really set my heart like on fire and it's just been like this is absolutely my path this is my gift to the world and it's just really motivated me to yeah. to share it with more with more working moms I want every working mom to experience this it's so true and I you know and I'm on the other side I want every dad out there or man out there to feel you know to feel energized by what we do and the passion and the purpose and you've definitely you know by hearing the words you're saying and the way you're saying it I I sense that you've found your passion I sense you found your purpose um, and you definitely are using that to help and support others and I think that's just amazing you know that's for me that's what this is all about if we can share our experiences or our learned our learnings through our journeys we can help others to connect to to those points as well so the future then I guess is the next place isn't it it's sort of like your thoughts where you're you know of course you've got a two and a half year old who's going to need a lot of your energy as well growing up and starting off in that journey towards schooling and, and everything else but but what do you want to do with all of this that you're doing at the moment you've put out a book you've got some um, some training some counseling things that you do already what do you think about the future Yes, so I have created a signature um, program. So it's okay. my Find Your Mama Groove um, yep. Mastermind. And I have been bringing this in, well, I've been working with, with groups of women. So they're experiencing the power of it within a group setting. So it's okay. been awesome because not only are they receiving the tools and um, you know the workshops and everything go along with it, they're also connecting with other like-minded women and they're held by these women and um, the accountability and just the group shares have been really, really um, profound. But um, my next step is to bring this into more of the corporate settings and to actually be working. Because what I found is that now, typically, like I work with working moms, but they're from all different companies where it's actually I'm like, no, I want to bring these into companies because I want it will change the culture of the company, um, being able to have the moms be able to go through this journey together and to connect in this way interesting yeah and have you got any first movers looking at those with you at the moment well i'm like well tomorrow i have two two big possibilities that it's okay. going to be yeah oh fingers crossed on the dotted line which would be really really exciting so 
I'll yeah. keep you posted. Yeah, please do. And all the best with that. And let's put that out into the universe now. They're going to be really successful and it's all going to go well, right? So Yeah, yeah. definitely. And that's where my focus is at for 2022 is just yeah, okay. bringing this program into corporate spaces. So incredible. Well, and so it a- is. And so it is. And it will be. It will be. Right. It will be. Oh, it's incredible. So, I, you know, thinking about those those harder times when you were younger, I, I do want to go back to that if, if we're OK to go there and and just talk about that, because you talked a little bit about, you know, your eating challenges and the anxiety that you had. If you could go back there now and sort of start to sort of unravel some of that, you know, what, what was going on at the time. And did you can you recognize now sort of some of those core elements to what was changing and what was going on for you? Yes. Um, you know, I feel like a big part of it was, well, you know, it's, it's twofold because I think that there's a big part about taking personal responsibility of our journey. Yeah. And then also just really being able to appreciate just the environments that we were in. And, um, you know, my, my dad suffered greatly from his own mental health, his own depression. And, um, and so my mom, who was a working mom, she took on everything. Right. She was superwoman. She was just, yeah, power. She's a powerful woman, but she did it all. So she was doing the working, doing the cooking, doing the cleaning. And she just had so little left over for, for herself um, and really for us. And so, um, you know, this is a big part about, so I guess if I, if I went back, um, I would, if I could just like wave a fairy wand, I would want to give my mom more support. Um, right. And I would also want to encourage my dad to take more of an active role in his whole healing journey instead of, I feel like, you know, pushing it on my mom to, to be able to heal him, like saying, no, dad, you're responsible for yourself. And, um, and for me, I wish that I could have been a little bit more courageous in in asking for help and um, receiving help because I like learned from a young age to be very independent and to take care of myself. And, um, I learned this like mechanism almost to like disconnect to be able to to survive and I feel like I I just I was very numbed I was a very sensitive child and because yeah. I felt things so strongly I, I just began to numb as my coping mechanism and um and so you know I would want to learn how to feel I would I would really want to to learn I guess the things that I did later in life to be able to have healing experiences where it was more about embodiment. It was about getting into my body instead of just sitting down and um, Mm. talking about issues in a counseling chair, because I feel that, yeah, healing is it's, it is about the mind body connection. And I guess I just, I wish I had worked with, yeah, like yoga therapists and um, shamans and priestesses when I was younger that would have been really amazing (laughs) but I think the big thing would have been just allowing myself to ask for help and receive help yeah because I yeah let myself feel loved okay you know I was worthy of love yeah Yeah. and you didn't feel that when you were going through all of that well I mean in reflection I feel like no I must have not because I worked so hard to you know get the awards and to get the best grades and to be in these positions of leadership and I you know I really feel like I was doing that trying to get those gold stars so that I could be praised and then could feel love through that instead of um, just inherently knowing that I am worthy just as I am and that I don't need to to try I can just be no, it's interesting. No, and thank you for sharing that as well. I appreciate appreciate your honesty around all of this too. It's it's um it's very useful to help others to understand sort of journeys that they're going through. Um, so you said about surviving, and and now you're thriving, right? You're doing really well. You you've got this energy. Would you define that change happening when you started yoga, or was there another point? Do you think where you suddenly some suddenly awoke, became awoke, woken up to what was going on, or you, I don't know. How would you define that? Hmm. Um, I feel that the, yeah, what's allowed me to thrive is actually just living life on my own terms. Okay. Like to stop people pleasing and stop doing a job that fit and like fit me into a box and actually to just to serve others and to actually feel like, okay, what is it that I'm here to do? And how is it that I want to live? And, you know, committing, I feel I'm, I am an extraordinary you know, woman, this is the gift that was given to me by that counselor. And so I want to be committed to living an extraordinary life because I just, yeah, for me, there's no, there's no other way. And so with that commitment, 
know, it's not always, always easy, but I also am like much more okay now. I feel like something that's really allowed me to thrive is to know that it's okay not to feel okay all the time. Yeah. You know, um, it's actually like being able to feel has been what's allowed me to, to thrive and being able to get into my body and out of my head has allowed me to thrive. Um, and so these are the, these are the tools that really have worked for me mm-hmm. immensely. And these are the tools that I share with, with the women that I work with as well. It's incredible. No, I, I, I think that's fascinating as well. And I think that's really uh, interesting, um, exciting sort of energies that come with all of that as well, when you're able to tune into it. Um, experiences of life have obviously brought you to where you are and you've come through so many different elements of that and you've changed and you've journeyed and you've been you know on this on this wonderful uh, journey with that what outside of the work side of what you do because obviously there's a lot of focus here around sort of workplaces supporting people and encouraging new mums or mums to to find their mama groove um what else is there in your life that you 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 put your energy into Mm, um, well, I love, I love women's circles and I love okay. to connect to my friends in that way. So bringing my friends together on new moons and full moons and being able to, okay. um, connect and share. I, yeah. And just to be able to do really fun, expressive practices and just to connect in that way in, in to really okay. connect with, with my friends in a way that's like, you know, alcohol is not needed and it's just us being there, like being childlike, having fun uh-huh. um, and really, yeah, expressing so, so, who so we are. are fun and expressive practices. What does that mean? What is What would that be? You know, sometimes we dance, sometimes oh, okay. we scream, oh, yeah, wow. a little scream therapy. There's like lots of different oh, wow. um, yeah, practices where we do like, there's like womb wrapping that we've done and um, lullaby singing, which sacred lullaby singing. So all wow. parts of like sound healing and yeah, yeah. yeah lots of, lots of different things. Wow. Lots of different okay. magic shared. Oh, wow. I love it. It sounds, it sounds incredible and fascinating as well. Um, <laughs> Well, so we are coming towards the end. We've only got a few more minutes and, and this time just disappears, doesn't it? It's one of the, the wonderful magic, magical things. But I just gonna say a huge thank you for, for, you know, opening up and talking about your experiences and talking about your journey. But I will share, you know, throw it over to you in a moment. And I'll just ask you for your, your final thoughts, words of wisdoms, any shameless plugs that you want to put in there as well. Please feel free. Um, but yeah, it's just fascinating. I love hearing different perspectives, different um, opportunities to sit down with very unique and incredible and amazing humans like yourself. Um, so thank you so much for, for sharing with me today. Um, final thoughts from you? My final thought is if there is a stirring inside your whole, your, inside your soul that you feel like you are capable of living a truer and more beautiful life, then, then listen to that, follow that, do whatever it takes. Um, and yeah, believe in yourself, believe in yourself. And I would also love to share my book with, with anyone who is listening. So if they come to my website, um, joannahunt.com, you can download a free digital copy of my best-selling book, Find Your Mama Groove, okay. um, my gift to you. And there's also an audio book that I have available on my website for just one one dollar one dollar so, do you know the currency yeah, so exchange mom's... rate <laughs> like one no pound. but i mean that's got to be like yeah like 60p i don't know um, is that good I don't know. <laughs> so yeah so please if this is has been interesting for you then please take a look at the book and um and please yeah get in touch and follow me on instagram send me an email um all of the things i'd love to to connect with with women who uh there's this story would resonate for them amazing well thank you so much joanna and i will drop the links to your um, to your work and to your website and stuff in the post for this as well so anybody that's listening please do go and check it out because you'll find the details that joanna's just shared with you um the book for anybody that is looking on the screen uh, find your mama groove i'll get the uh, book around the right way and um, was it say five steps to a balanced happy connected life and family and i love that so thank you for bringing this to the world thank you for sharing your learnings and your thank journey you. uh, with us as well and thank you so much just for everything you're doing it's a lot of thank you going on but i think it's important yeah. right? so, thank, you, thank, well, you, thank, thank you. you yeah thank you thank you uh, thank you for having me here today oh uh, you're uh, more than welcome for, yeah all uh, you do and create in the world 
Oh, brilliant. No, and we're all in it together, you know, and we're trying to do our little thing, aren't we, to, to get these conversations flowing. So so that's it for everybody that's listening. We are finished for this uh, for this recording. Um, it's been another incredible um, episode, um, well into the 100s now. So it's, um, yeah, I just can't believe how many episodes we're putting putting out there now and just incredible. Every story is a unique one. Thank you so much, Joanna. Appreciate your time. Wishing you all the very best for, for you and your family and uh, continued success. Good luck. Thank you. Take care.